Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining us on our YouTube channel. Hey, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content that we're putting out here from Zoe. Hey, also do me a favor. If you're part of our online location, get on our website, make sure you're giving and being a part of what God is doing here at Zoe Church. I'm really excited for this week's message because we're gonna continue on in the series, How Then Shall We Lifestyle? We believe that with God, you belong, you believe, and then you become. As you become who God's called you to become, you start living a different lifestyle. This week, we're talking about resting in God, not because you've earned it, but because of the finished work of the cross. Come on, let's check out this week's message. Hebrews chapter four, I'll read and then I'll explain. Let me just read this. Hebrews four says, now, if this promise of rest was fulfilled when Joshua brought the people in land, well then God wouldn't have spoken later of yet another rest to come. So we conclude that there is still a full and complete rest waiting for believers to experience. As we enter into God's faith rest, I love those two words together. So what we're talking about tonight is a faith rest. As we enter into God's faith rest life, we cease from our own works just as God celebrates His finished works and rests in them. So then we must give our all and be eager to experience this faith rest life so that no one falls short by following the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. The Bible is talking to us about one of the most important thoughts that God has for us. It's called rest. And I am believing that us as a church and us as a people, we are going to enter into faith rest. Now, if you're new to our church, we started a series a couple weeks ago. It's called How Then Shall We Lifestyle? How then shall we live as people that are trying to follow grace and follow Jesus? How shall we live? Now, we believe in these three truths about God. You belong to God long before you believe in God. I love this about belonging, by the way. We're going to have baptisms. At the end of the month, we're going to baptize people in our East Valley and Bancroft location. And getting baptized is saying, I'm getting incorporated into this thing. I belong to this thing. I'm no longer afraid of the world. I'm in grace right now. And so I belong to Jesus. You ought to get baptized. So there's a belonging, and then you come to faith in God. You start to believe in God. God does not just leave you right here. He says, once you belong to me, me you, from your birth you believe in me and then I start working in your life and you become who you're called to become you become more and more like Jesus I want to tell you the Bible says that God is at work in you he is at work in your life right now so that you both will and do his will that you literally start doing the will of God for your life so he is at work in your life so you become who you're supposed to become come on clap if you're thankful God is working in me We belong even before we believe. Once we believe, God starts working on us and we start becoming more and more like Jesus. It changes not just your Sunday flow, it changes your lifestyle, it changes the way you live. You're living more generous. You're living as a person of grace. You're living as a person with peace on your pillow. It changes not just your Sunday attendance, it changes your lifestyle. One of the lifestyles that God starts working in our lives is we start living a lifestyle of rest. We start entering into faith rest, and all of a sudden, we find rest for our weary soul. I want to preach a message today. Write down the title. It's called, I'm So Tired of Being Tired. You ever just have that feeling like, man, I can't catch up on sleep. I am tired of being exhausted. No nap seems to satisfy my exhaustion. I just feel always like I'm tired. I'm tired of going to work. I'm tired of my friends. I'm tired of paying taxes. I'm tired of, I'm, I'm tired of the Clippers because the Lakers beat them today. You, holla at your boy if you feel revival. I just, I'm tired. I'm so tired of being tired. I just want to let you know that no trip to Maui or Cabo can satisfy that exhaustion. 
the only thing that will bring the revitalization and the rejuvenation that you desire is by literally entering into grace and rest that is only found in Jesus. Last Sunday, uh, Julie and I, we took a Sunday away uh, from our kids, and we, we, we went away. We flew out on a Sunday, came back on a Monday, and we went down to Cabo. When we, got my, we, when we got in the taxi down in Cabo, they're like, how long are you staying? I said, my man, just one night. He goes, one night? We've never heard of this before. You're the first ever. I'm like, man, I'm busy, fam. Chill out. So we went down to Cabo, and your boy, you know, your boy was real careful. I put sunscreen everywhere. I put it on my feet. I put it on my, on my neck. I put it, Julia, you know, she hooked up the back. But I put sunscreen everywhere. I, there was only one place I didn't put sunscreen. I didn't put sunscreen right here. No man likes to be touched right here. Nobody ever is like, thank you for putting your hand right here. Even I don't want to put my hand right here. So I got sunburnt like crazy right here your boy but listen no trip to Cabo or Maui can give you the rest that your soul needs it can only happen by entering into grace and receiving and believing that's how we enter into the rest that is found in Jesus how then shall we lifestyle we should live a lifestyle of rest we don't need rest once every six months. We are not living for these, these big, epic trips. No, God has a rhythm for our rest, and I'm going to teach you it tonight. But come on, let's pray, and let's believe that God will come and speak to us through his word. Jesus, thank you that you're awesome. Thank you that you are amazing. We fix our eyes on you, and we say that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We are asking that you would open up our eyes so we can see you, open up our ears so we can hear you. We love you, and we live for you, and we are believing on a night like tonight that you will literally do something unique and profound that can only happen when your word goes forward, and we thank you. God that we are in the greatest city in the world the city of Los Angeles in Jesus name and everybody said together come on let's clap one more time and thank God for his great grace I, did, I just want to show you what rest is real fast look on the screen rest is first in the core of your spiritual man rest is not physical as much as it is spiritual it is first in your heart your heart is at rest and if you're at rest in your heart, your life will flow from that rest to your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Have you ever been in a situation where you're easily prone to crying and everyone's like, are you good? I'm like, yeah. I don't think you're good, bro. Because my emotions are out of whack. And my mind is not, you ever get scared about where your thinking's at? And you're like, I'm in a dark place. <laughs> oh, you laughed too quiet for that one. <laughs> because when you're not rested, it messes with your soul. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. When you're rested, your heart is good, which means your soul is good. Look at this last one. I love this. Resting in God's grace is saying this truth. When I am weak, then I am strong. Resting in Jesus is literally recognizing my mind is not right, my emotions are not right, my will wants to do the will of me and not the will of God, but I know that when I am weak, He is strong. When I come to rest in God, His power is made perfect, and He starts doing something in me to restore that which is broken and that which needs fixing. Come on, clap tonight if you're grateful that Jesus comes to give you a rest to make your heart right. Rest is not just physical, it is just as much spiritual. And you need to understand the big idea of race, rest. In fact, write down number one tonight. Embrace the big idea. If God needed rest, so do I. You don't know anything about God. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that God created the sun and the moon and the stars. He created man and woman. He created everything. He created the sea. He created the creatures. And after six days of working, the Bible says God rested. 
He had a Sabbath day of rest. Why did God rest? God did not rest because he was tired. God does not get tired. He was not exhausted. No, God took a seventh day of rest because he wanted to look back on six days and recall all the miracles. He wanted to remember how good God had been. He remembered all the amazing things that transpired. Man, remember the animal? Man, remember when I made man? Remember the trees and the forest? God, you needed a seventh day to look back. In fact, write that down on your notes. I love of this rest to consider all that God has done so listen you need six days I'm not talking about being lazy if you're lazy let me hear hear me say you need to work because work is a gift from God the Bible in Proverbs goes after the lazy man he's like you play Xbox too much you only eat top ramen you all up on tinder oh I'm preaching now I seen a couple dudes like, oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> so the Bible's saying six days work. Seventh day, you need to pause and consider what God has done. Wow. God, I did not see that open door you just opened. Wow, I cannot believe the relationship you just gave. Man, God, thank you for that thought you dropped in my heart this week that you are for me, who can be against me? I need a time in the rhythm of my life to consider all that God has done. If I don't, I'll think I did it. If I do, I'll know it's you that made it happen. You are my source. You are my supplier. You are my favor. You are my... Come on, somebody thank him right now. If I don't pause, I think it's me. When I do pause, I know it's God. I need to pause. I need, whoa, look at God. Look at what you've done. You are so faithful. You are so big. You are so generous. You are so merciful. You are so compassionate. You are so kind. You are so loving. I am so bad. You are so good. If you don't do it, you think I'm awesome. I grind. I make it happen. Shut up. I need to pause and consider this is God. What's the next one? Write it down. You need to rest for your soul. So part of this is resting so I can recognize the finished work of Jesus. And part of it is just resting like, yo, if I don't slow down and I don't just get some rest for my soul, I'm going to com just completely drain myself. I'm going to deplete myself. That I will become a shell of who I'm supposed to be. I'll lose all my passion. I'll lose all my faith. I will literally not become the person that God has called me to be become unless I sit and I spend time with Jesus watch this in Matthew I love this scripture this is Jesus Matthew 11 are you tired are you worn out are you burned out on religion come to me watch this get away with me in Cabo sunscreen and you'll recover your life I'll show you how to take a real what's that word come on Zoe what's that word a real rest Oh, I love this. Walk with me and work with me and watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. He's like, are you tired? And all of LA is like, yeah. <laughs> what about um, worn out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he goes a step further. What about burnout? And everybody's like, yeah, how did you know? <laughs> Come. Come rest. And I will teach you how to live in the unforced rhythms of grace. This is what the world does not know. This is what culture cannot figure out. How can you work for only six days? And most people in L.A. like, I can't afford a day off. No, you, you've never been more true. You can't afford to not take a day off. Because if you keep going at the rate you're going, you'll just be another statistic and you've got to move back to Pennsylvania. <laughs> My bad. Nebraska. But Jesus says, come and learn from me and walk with me and, and rest in me and, and recognize 
that you are weak, but I am strong. Re recognize that I am your source and I am your provider. Re re recognize, let's just rest here. Let's just receive the unforced rhythms of grace. Grace is so awesome, it shows up in the most unexpected ways at the most unexpected times. Like, God, really? what? I was just minding my business, and then all of a sudden, grace. Because it's the unforced rhythms of grace. You need rest for your soul. Write down the third one. Here's the next one that you need, is that you literally need rest from, from because he's in control. Psalm 127, verse 2, In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. But he grants sleep to those he loves. You need to rest because what you're saying is, God, you are in control. I am not the boss. I am not, in, I am not God. You are God. And since you are in control, what I am saying right here, I will work six days and I will pause a seventh to say, you're making this happen. I am not. You are in control. You are God. You are big. You are mighty. You are a fortress. You're my deliverer. You're my source. You're my strength. And so... I don't have to toil night and day, make it happen, grind mode, beast mode, whatever mom mode you want. It's not me, it's God. He's like, you, you're doing it in vain. In vain you work too much. In vain you go too hard. In vain you're doing all this stuff. Stop and pause and let me be God. You are not that good. You are not that talented. It is only by grace that you are where you are and you're doing what you're doing. Somebody give him some praise. He's a good God. He's an awesome God. And by the way, he's in control. If God wanted to promote you, he'd do it right now. If God wanted you in a different job, he'd make it happen right now. He has the whole world. The earth is the Lord's and all that is within it. He's got the end from the beginning. He is masterful. He's alpha and omega. He knows what he's doing, and he is in control. Give him a praise right now if you're grateful. God is my source. God is in control. He's in control. And when I rest, when I pause, when I stop on my Sabbath, when I pause in this rest, I am just saying, I know you, you're the God of Zoe Church. I, I, I might be a little preacher, but your God is your church. Your, it's your city. It's your people. These are your kids. You can have half of them back. Take the two youngest right now. This is in this season. Two and four is hard. This is my confession. Write down the next thought. I love this. Rest because the journey is long. Most of us, our biggest problem is you're living a lifestyle of a sprint, but this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. And a lot of us, you're, you're going to be here today and gone tomorrow. You're not going to, at the rate you're running, you're not going to last. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. This is about building legacy. This is about years of serving God, knowing God, being in church, reading the Bible, praying, being in connect group, serving on the ZST. We're not trying to do this for a season. It's not a fad. It's not a trend. This is the rest of our life. I feel faith tonight. Come on, clap and thank him. This is the rest of my life. Like I'm in heart and soul the rest of my life. It was amazing being at Saddleback Church today and preaching for Pastor Rick Warren. As you drive into the parking lot, there's a huge banner that says 40 years of faithfulness. They are 40 years old. And Zoe, we're four. They're 40. 40 years of faithful ministry. They just passed 50,000 baptisms at Saddleback Church. 50,000 people have gotten saved. They just passed as a church. They gave away $1 billion as a church in 40 years. You ought to clap louder than that. I know that's not our church. That's our church. And the, the statistics that, that, that come out of Saddleback, Pastor Rick Warren, who wrote the book that is the second most sold book in the history of America, only second to the Bible. Purpose Driven Life, 50 million copies. It is the Guinness Book World Record for most translations to a book. 
in his book, Purpose Driven Life, 50 million, and you hear the statistics, but I will tell you what impressed me the most. He said at age 16, his father was a minister, and in the denomination he grew up in, they, they, his dad had a bunch of churches under him that didn't have preachers. And so at age 16, on the weekend, he would go preach at different churches. By the time he was 18, he had already preached in 150 revival meetings. Billy Graham found him at 18 years old because he had heard of this kid that was preaching all the time before he was 18 and raised him up and mentored him. And this happened at 16, at 18, and now Pastor Rick, 40 years in pastoring Saddleback. I'm telling you, he's not talking about the glory days. He's talking about what they're doing around the world. He's talking about the future. He's burning with passion. Why? Because he built into rhythm. The journey is long, but I want to last. I want to fight the good fight. I want to finish the race. I'm not trying to be some guy that was good in my 20s or 30s. Come on, clap right now. You need to get this in your spirit. We're trying to do this for the rest of our life oh I love this about Elijah in first Kings it says this Elijah's getting ready to climb this big mountain and so God says all at once an angel touched him and said get up and eat and he looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water and he ate and drank and then lay down again then the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him again and said get up and eat for the journey is too much for you so he got up again and ate and drank and strengthened by that food he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. He's by a tree and he's asleep and the angel wakes him up not to go, come on man, get up, let's go. The angel says, hey, get up. Hey, we got some bread for you and, and here's some water and, and he eats and he, you know you live right when you eat and just get to take a nap. He falls asleep, and the angel comes back and wakes him up again. Hey, woo! Hey, bro. Hey, man. We got some more bread for you. And Elijah's like, is it gluten-free? <laughs> angel's like, shut up. You're from L.A. <laughs> and he gives him bread, and he gives him water. And then with that strength, with that strength, he climbs the mountain of Horeb, the mountain of God. Let's be honest. Do you have enough strength to make it? Let's just be honest. Are you strong enough? Because at your rate, you're not going to last. Some of you need the angel of God to come stop you tonight and just say, hey, rest. Rest. You're going way too fast. You're working way too hard. Yeah, but man, you don't know my schedule. You don't know. Man, I got a call on my life. I'm building a business. A business? What? No, you're not. No, you're not. Six days work. Seventh day rest. Because the journey is long. I don't want Zoe Church to be here for four years. I want Zoe Church to be here in 40 years and only getting started into what we're about to walk into. Clap if you're grateful that God is just getting started. It's strength. So God wants to show you tonight what rest is. It's spiritual. It's rest for your soul. And God wants to show you what rest is not. So we don't get it twisted. In fact, write it down, the next thought. Rest is not this. Rest is not, it's not focusing on me, it's focusing on Jesus. This is where a lot of us get rest twisted because we're like, rest, I just need to be in my feelings and I need to understand what I'm, what's going on and it's all about me and it's about what's going, do people like me and I need to just understand me. You need to get your eyes off yourself and you need to get your eyes on your God. Rest is about getting my eyes off of the minutia of life and the details of life and my problems in life and my depression in life and say, I need to pause and say, I need to see Jesus. God, our are you for me? Are you with me? Are you in this? Are you speaking? Are you changing? Are you shifting? Come on, somebody thank him right now. I, it's not about putting my eyes on myself. I need to see Jesus again. 
I think he put it in our schedule because it's like six days. I got my eyes on my work. I got my eyes on my finances. I got my eyes on, I'm, I'm working, I'm going. I need a seventh day to pause and lift my head and say, where are we at? I love Devon Franklin. He did such a great job preaching last Sunday. And we honor him. We're always honored to have him. And one time I text Devon and he didn't text me back. I got offended. And then he texts me back later the next day, and he said, I'm so sorry from this time when the sun goes down on this day to when the sun comes up the next day, or sorry, the same evening, for 24 hours, I turn off my phone. I was like, teach me your ways. How do I get on that level? I need to start making movies. And for 24 hours, he turns off his phone, and, and he's getting his heart right, and his mind right, and his life right, and he's getting his eyes back. Isn't it amazing that as soon as you see Jesus again, you're like, oh, everything's going to be all right. It's that when you're down here, and you're like, I, I, I can't see God. I don't, I don't see him in this. I don't know if he's for me. I don't know if he's in this and his fret, worry. As soon as you see Jesus, you're like, oh, yeah, we're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel that way? Yeah. And so I need rest. I need rest to be able to not, don't, don't, don't spend your rest going, how am I doing? What do others think of me? How do I change my Enneagram number? It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Here's, here's the next thing. It's not, write this down. I hope this is encouraging you tonight. It's not a stop from stretching my faith. So it, it's just a pause for a day to get my life and my soul and my heart right and my eyes right so that on the next week I get back to six days of I'm stretching my faith. I'm killing my giants. I'm, I'm climbing that mountain. I'm going after what God has for me. I ain't playing no games. I got six days of working this thing. And I'm about to work, 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 work. I'm about to make it happen. Come on, clap right now. God's not asking you to pull back. He's asking you to slay your giant. He's asking you to charge that hill. He's asking you to stretch your faith. He's asking you to move a mountain. Give him a shout and thank him in advance. I'm just getting my strength back so I can come and do what you called me to do. It bothers me. It's weird to me when people are like, I'm taking a break from serving. You're taking a break from what? No, 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 no. God wants you to get your rest, but then he wants you to come and serve and pour out and give and love and help and deliver. He's not asking you to shrink back from his call. He's not asking you to move back from his plan. No, he wants you to keep on going and keep on loving and keep on building. Somebody thank him right now. Anything is possible to the one that will not stop from what God's called them to do. It's not that. It's not going like, you know, I'm just going to rest. I'm going to pull back. I'm going to pull back my generosity. I'm going to pull back my kindness. I'm going to pull back my invitations. No, I'm telling you, this is where the enemy starts working. God will do more with your six days that you stretch out. He will do more with your six days that you slay giants. He will do more with your six days of stretching faith than you will ever get by spending seven days chilling. You don't need to chill. You need a day of rest. You need six days of let's go. Let's go. Like we waking up tomorrow, it's go time. For me a little bit later, you know, because I've been preaching, okay? So give me a little bit of break tomorrow morning. That was that Julia in the front row. That was shot shots fired at Julia. Yo, that was kind of personal. That's at my wife, okay? I got a microphone. It's all good. It's not, it's not pullback. It, it, the problem is, and this where I understand it, is that because you haven't been living in the rhythm of rest and it's not in your rhythm, you are so beaten down and so tired and so exhausted, you get to a place, you're like, I got to pull back. But when you live in the rhythm, it's like, no, I got, I'm good. I just need a day to get my eyes right, a day to get my heart right. I need a day to get everything back. Okay, it's about Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about my name. It's not about my, what I can make. It's not about money. It's not about, okay, I got it. Okay, my soul's right. My emotions are, thank God, I was really emotional this week. I'm, I'm, everything's back. Let's go. 
You see what I'm saying? So you're like, okay, that sounds great, preacher guy. But what does that look like practically? Practically, what are you trying to say? Let me just give you three things I want you to do this week. Like I want you to put into practice this week. Three things. You This week, we're like, I'm getting in the rhythm this week. In fact, write this down just as a working title. Lean into the rhythm of rest. It's a rhythm. My dad, my dad used to tell me that we're growing up playing basketball and we get down by like, you know, 15, 20 and we try, and in a basketball game, we try and come back like with one shot. And my dad would say, son, there is no such thing as a 10 pointer. Like you got to work back point by point. Like in that, the rhythm of rest is not the Maui or Cabo. The rhythm of rest is once a week, Sabbath. I do this once a week. Once a week, I get it. This is my new lifestyle. In fact, so just three things this week. Number one, intentional activities. I want you to write down tonight in your phone or in your uh, notepad, what is one intentional activity you're going to do this week? It could be tennis. It could be basketball. It could be, uh, ladies, retail therapy. Can it get an amen? amen. There's a lot of say amen we got tonight. You need to put in your phone an intentional activity. My question to you is, do you even hobby, bro? Do you have hobbies? Do you have activities that when you're doing these things, your mind is off of the six days and on to the things that fill up your cup and make you happy and fill your tank? So you need to understand what is the intentional activity you're going to do. Here's the second one. Write this down. Plan devotion. What is the planned devotion you're going to have? Write it down right now. I am going to spend 15 minutes with Jesus, reading the scriptures, and praying for 15 minutes at this time this week. Is it Tuesday? Thursday? I'm just asking you right now, just give me one, one time this week We have a planned devotion. And in that devotion, you should pick up a Zoe Devo on your way out, start reading the Bible, Get your heart quiet, get your life quiet, and start getting some devotion to God. It's a planned devotion. I know this week you are going to have so many appointments. You're going to have a lot of meetings. In your phone, you're going to like, I got to meet with Rick, I got to meet with Sam, I got to meet with Jill, I got to meet with Ted, all white names, I loved all that. That was fun. <laughs> Larry in the back's like, whoa, how did he know that? I didn't. I'm not a prophet. I just know that's par for the course. Okay. You have so many appointments this week, but I want to tell you there's one appointment that's on your calendar and it cannot be missed. That is an appointment with Jesus. Just plan your devotion. I'm going to plan this thing. I am going to this week, I am going to get my life quiet and my heart ready. And I'm going to, I'm going to position myself in a place to hear from God. Oh, man. Here's the last one. Number three. I love this one. Unplug to refresh my perspective. Unplug to refresh my perspective. Unplug so I can refresh. I don't think you understand how critical your perspective is. That when your perspective gets skewed, your whole life gets skewed. Remember, you first live from your premise. Your premise is how you live your life from. So I'm living from the premise. I belong to God. I believe in God. And he's at work in my life. That's my premise. The premise of my life is God is for me. Who can be against me? The premise of my life is that I'm going to heaven. Nothing can stop me. Come on, anybody have a good premise in your life? I just know my why, because of grace. You got to have in life a great premise and a great perspective. My perspective is healthy. My perspective is right. My perspective is good. My perspective is generous. When you grind and grind and grind and grind and go, 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 your perspective gets skewed. You ever hear somebody talk about church and you're like, wow, what a weird perspective you have 
on church. Just shows me you haven't been in a while. Then you come back into the presence of God and you get around God's people and you start singing and hear the word preached and you go, wow, that changed my perspective. You got to get into the perspective of God when you get quiet. So here's what I'm asking you to do to get right perspective is I want you to take social media break for 24 hours. This week, put it down. What is it going to be? Tomorrow, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Don't do Sunday. I want you to post on your story about Zoe Church. Anyways, but... Come on, you guys, we're just kidding, but it's true. Okay. One time this week for 24 hours, I want you to take a 24-hour break from social media. Why not the phone? Well, because you probably have some calls and probably some texts. I'd love for you to include that, but at least start with social media. Take a break, unplug, and just get your perspective back. Maybe start building that into your lifestyle every week. Amen? But I'm believing because some of us, we're like, I'm so tired of being tired. When will it end? You're like on your phone Googling Bahamas. <laughs> what I wouldn't give for Mazatlan. You don't need it. You don't need it. You need a Sabbath day of rest. You need a day set apart for God and you to get your soul right and your heart right. It's got to be your lifestyle. Come on, Zoe. I feel faith tonight. Come on, build some faith right now. Say, I will not be a person that compromises a day of Sabbath. Hear me. Hear me. When and where did we start taking the Ten Commandments as ten suggestions? These are not suggestions. They are commandments. We start ranking them. Oh, be, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. But day of Sabbath, that's like optional. It's not. It's not. It wasn't for God, and it's not for you. Last scripture, Exodus. Put up this scripture in Exodus. I almost didn't read it. This is the last scripture I want to share, and then we'll be done tonight. I love this scripture. Exodus chapter 20. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But on the seventh day is a Sabbath day to God, your God. Don't do any work, not you, nor your son, nor your daughter. For in six days, God made heaven, earth, sea, everything in them. He rested on the seventh day. Therefore, God blessed the Sabbath. He set it apart as a holy day. So if God needed a day of rest, you need a day of rest. So last question. When is your Sabbath? I don't want you to come and be like, that's kind of a cute message tonight. It's, it's kind of cool thoughts, you know. When are you planning your devotion? Bigger question. What day is your Sabbath? And if you don't have one, let's start building it into our lifestyle. A day to rest and receive from heaven. That's called faith rest. Amen.